AEW Dynamite. We get a little Darby Allen. We get a little Hangman Adam Page in the main event. We set up another step towards all in. We get Tony Khan and Shane McMahon meeting reported being earlier today. And Brian Danielson set to retire. I'm your host, Brian, the Hype Ballard. Let's go ahead. This is the results and thoughts for AEW Dynamite in the last day of July 2024. Let's get in. I want to start out. I want to talk a little bit about Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay, Lance Archer. This is how the show starts out. It actually begins with MJF making his way entrance to the ring, getting on the mic. He gets on the crowd for having no class. He says he defeated the Red Coat terrorist, Will Ospreay. With ease, bringing gold back to the great nation, he asks the crowd to rise for their American hero. Enter Will Ospreay, getting ready to get into a fight. MJF just simply runs away. Will gets on the mic to call him out. Tells him to go ahead and keep running because he's going to put him through pain so much he can't imagine. That then leads us in to ultimately the matchup that we are going to see. Lance Archer versus Will Ospreay. Archer, again, just kind of getting into it, choke slamming Ospreay out of the gates right away. Press, pressing the attack, big forearm, handspring corkscrew, and Lance falls to the ground. Will fires back off the ropes. We get a flying tiger drop blocked. Archer then with a scoop slam, floor breaking Frankenstein into the barricade at one point. We get a commercial. We come back. We get Osprey with chokes and we get a nice little back and forth action here between the big power house that is Lance Archer. I miss the Murderhawk monster. I wish kind of seeing him a little bit more. I've always enjoyed his work. And Will Osprey, I'm starting to believe, can be in the ring with anybody in different calibers. And that's why I am drawn to his performances. On in the match, we get Osprey with a Spanish fly off the top, but the Murderhawk monster kicks out of that. We get a springboard Lance kicks out of the Oss cutter. And then ultimately, what is going to take this big man down? We then ultimately get, get Will Ospreay getting the pinfall with a hidden blade. In post-match, we get MJF getting back with mounted punches and a brain buster to lay Osprey out in the ring. But he then goes and puts the dynamite ring on, and Kyle Fletcher makes the save. And I knew Kyle Fletcher would eventually insert himself into this little saga they got going on into all in. So little one in there. MJF demands the microphone and he uh, on the stage as Don Callis slides into the ring to give Kyle a mic. Fletcher says he knows that Don said no more getting involved since Osprey left the Don Callis family. But Will is his best friend and his brother and he's lying in a heap because that narcissistic self-centered asshole and he's not going to sit back and let him do it. He tells them JF that karma's coming to bite him, and he heard every single word last week as he knows Max doesn't give a damn about America. Just what's best for himself. Secondly, we heard what he had to say about foreign wrestlers. We get a little bit of you know, back and forth here in the conversation, and then ultimately we are looking at Ospre Daniel Garcia says he's going to break his neck and leave him in a pool of his own blood with only Osprey to blame. So after that, we do get a quick Chris Jericho FTW championship reign in an interview backstage. He shows off his injured hand and says that Brian Keith is going to beat him up next week. Big Bill gives Alex Marvez the cake and he threatens to smash him with it before ordering and he eats the cake to respect Jericho. Ultimately, then we do go to Chris Statlander versus Willow Nightingale for the CMLL World Women's Championship Eliminator match. Statlander with a missile drop kick before the bell and we go to commercial. We come back. Willow counters with a gourd buster, short arm lariat, looking for the doctor bomb back and forth, back and forth. Ultimately, this one does go. Um, into a later on ending with a counter into a power bomb, a spike DDT, but can't put Statlander away. Statlander off the top with a 450 splash, and Willow then kicks out. And then Stokey Hathaway slips her a chain. Chris Statler wins by pinfall with a loaded punch, earning a title shot at Willow's CMML World Championship. Ultimately, post-match, Chris hits Willow with the chair a few times in heel-like fashion. Security gets into the ring, gets involved, and Statlander takes them out, too. And Stokey 
happily stops her from attacking them while he's down on the map. So then, at this point, we are going to get... This match was serving the purpose, moving things forward, didn't overstay its welcome, didn't necessarily hate it. More of a storyline match than anything. Then we get into Brian Danielson making his entrance, and he's going to get a lot of time tonight as we realize that it's going to be something important. He gets to the addresses the Greenville crowd, and then he ultimately talks about his wife and their engagement pictures um, taken right here in Greenville. And it's funny because he was just looking ultimately at those in the good old days until they're almost gone. He has two things to talk about tonight, presents and promises. He's been very lucky in his career being forced to retire, says Danielson. He's been lucky enough ever since to come back from that retirement and be present in the good old days. These last three years in AEW have been incredible, the most fun in his career. He was able to be present behind the curtain and to be present while the crowd chanted, yes, yes, yes. The crowd chants, thank you, Brian. He is grateful for the presence. He talks about promises now, promising his family that his AEW contract will be the last contract he ever signs and the promise to himself that he'll give everything he has every time he steps in the ring for us and for himself because we all deserve it. When he comes to AEW, he said he was going to do two things, kick people's heads in and win the AEW World Championship. Over the last three years, he's kicked a lot of heads in, but he's never grabbed that big prize. He'll give us 100% because 101% isn't possible. And he promises that all in with his mind, body, and soul that he'll go all in. And then we get Swerve Strickland, the champion, coming in with Prince Nana as always. He gets in the ring. We get a who's house versus a yes chance and says he'll keep it real. He respects the hell out of Danielson. He respects him for inspiring the whole generation wrestlers. And another time is coming is a cheer, but this is Swerve's time. And when he came here to say that he was going to win the world title, Brian is one of the greatest of his generation, but he is the kind and people 10 years from now are gonna go back and watch his run. Ultimately, we get Strickland telling Brian to keep that promise to his family as this ends the back and forth. Really good promo here between both men. Not only getting Brian Danielson some time here, but ultimately we do get Swerve Strickland looking strong as the champion. And this is going to be kind of an exciting little showdown between these two. Swerve's title versus Danielson's career at all in. This is the stipulation that was added to this match. It's interesting that we are getting this because we know Danielson's career, and this does put an interesting thing. Do we allow Swerve Strickland to end Brian Danielson's career at all in in front of the largest stage, or do we allow Brian Danielson to capture the AEW World Championship and shortly retiring it maybe? as his contract is set to run out. So ultimately, we do get a little bit of a story here. It's either going to put over and build a current champion even stronger, or we could get a final reign of the American Dragon. Renee Paquette chases Brian Danielson down for an interview, but Jeff Jarrett meets him, applauds his decision, and Daniel slaps his hand down and challenges him to a match the very next week between the two. Looking forward to that one just to get a little ring and work in for Brian. Next up, we do get the conglomeration versus the Beast Mortos, Roger Strong and Rush. Ultimately, we get a quick match up here with the trios match. They go back and forth. We get some moves, training shots, Briscoe. Ultimately, we go to commercial. And then we get some German suplexes from Ishii. Ultimately, then we go. The Beast Mortos, Roddick Strong, and Rush win by pinfall from Mortos on Mark Briscoe. They claim cut a promo talking about looking for FTR but not being able to find them and tell them to put up or shut up as we go to break. And up next, Renee sits down with Mariah May. Mariah says that she is all she has to say and go ahead and ask your questions. She says it's very clear that from day one that she wanted to be just like Tony Storm, get closer to her than anything else. Tony then makes her entrance and talks about letting what you love kill you. And at all in, it'll be a romance of a lifetime. Love that promo there. And meanwhile, if you guys missed it, we get Camille making her 
AEW debut here as she is now All Elite. Camille in a quick matchup against Brittany Jade in control, throwing her across the ring. Big Rough Rider, AKA the X Factor. And then Camille wins with the X Factor. Post match, we get Mercedes Monet on the mic and she says you can see why they call Camille the Brick House. And talks about how Britt Baker is obsessed with her, but who wouldn't be? She says nobody cares about Britt's blood, sweat, and tears because this is her house now. And losing to her is going to be the greatest thing to happen in Baker's career. So, it's interesting. If you don't know Camille, she started out, trained with Team 3D Academy by the famous Dudley Boys. Ultimately, then going to the NWA and spending some time there, building up her brand a little bit for a couple years, and going to AAA, Lucha Libre. And now, the year 2024, Camille is all elite. Interesting quick match here. I'll be interested to see a little bit more what they do with her. But I do like, you know, these quick little debuts that makes me dive into some of the history of the wrestler and see where it's going from here out. And then we get to the main event. And I want to say real quick, main event time, we got Hangman Adam Page versus Darby Allen in our much known matchup between these two, these AEW originals. Circling, we get a duck lariat, Darby Allen with a side headlock, a shot off, drop down, springboard, arm drag, drop, sends Page crashing to the floor. Darby up, he gets a coffin drop to the floor, caught into a German suplex, and boom, on Page goes on him. Ultimately, we fast forward, we go to commercial, we come back. We get some action in the ring. We get, uh, ultimately, Paige is up and down, clawing at Darby's face, dragging the steel steps into position at the base of the ramp. Hangman stalking with a determination. And uh, Darby Allen vaults over the steps. We get a step up cross body. Paige puts him into the post and slams him onto the apron. You know, it's kind of what you would expect from these two in the matchup. We know that both guys can go a little hardcore, and they use the outside quite a bit here in this one. We do get a fall away into the steel steps, and Darby is screaming agony as we go to a second break. So a little more time on this matchup. We come back. Page is working. Him into the turnbuckles. We get an avalanche fall away slam, sending Darby clean across the ring. Darby Allen then slips out, double legs, hangman on steel steps, gouging his eyes, getting a little brutal and crazy. Shotgun drop kick, backsplash, hangman. Then we get a coffin drop, countered into a sleeper hold towards the end, reversed with a pin, and Darby slips to the apron. And we want the buckshot, but we don't get it. Page meets him with a lariat of his own for a near fall. We get some mounted punches. The last ride is coming. Adam is looking for the dead eye, and he hits it. Hangman onto, and basically we get Darby Allen collapsing. He's popping up. There's a lariat counter, a folding press, and boom, Darby Allen ends up winning this one by pinfall with a folding press. Post-match, we get a furious Hangman Adam Page going to the floor, throwing chair after chair into the ring, and Darby Allen basically gives him the old two-finger salute from the ramp as Dynamite is off the air. Not a bad little main event, got its job done tonight. Um, nothing we have not seen before, but it did serve as the main event. I do believe that this could have been, you know, also this should have been the main event. I also feel like the Brian Danielson announcement could have been in the main event, maybe, but I know we want to end as with a match on Dynamite. That is the way they structure the program. So this one definitely was the one to go with tonight. Other than that, um, not really too much on the Dynamite, but let's get into our final thoughts and let's talk about some Shane McMahon stuff. Before we do, I just want to say thank you guys for all the likes and love that you give on the channel. If you like wrestling, hit that like button. Ultimately, if you're new to the channel, hit consider subscribing. But if you already are, thank you so much for being with me. Always love talking about it. We're also part of the fans of ProWrestling.com with my other teammates, the Wrestling Fans Insight. We do a lot of great shows every Sunday on Sunday Takedown over there. But let's get into what AEW did this week. It was kind of an in-between show for me. We got a little bit of story, a little bit of dialogue. I always like the wrestling and interview balance approach that they do put on these programs. I do feel that if you missed the show tonight, outside the Brian Danielson announcement with the stipulation, I feel like there wasn't really a lot of content. Um, we had a couple quick matches, couple quick interviews. Um, MJF continued his thought, but what happened today is we got the news 
of Shane McMahon really overpowering AEW Dynamite and what happened today. So the news of Shane McMahon in a picture surfaced on social media with Shane McMahon shown meeting with Tony Khan. And you can only imagine what would happen if Shane McMahon did show up at All In. But what would his role be? I want to give you my thoughts on that. I believe Shane McMahon and AEW could be interesting if done correctly. I'm not talking a full-on control of the company, but there is a storyline baked in there where the elite are doing the against Tony Khan type story here. And I believe that Shane McMahon would might be a fun pairing with the elite to take over or attempt a little more of a takeover with AEW Dynamite against Tony Khan. Tony Khan's got his champion in Swerve Strickland, and he's got guys that do have his back, but ultimately, we could up the ante with a McMahon in AEW. Who would have ever thought that that would even be a thing? Not even a, two years ago, but a year ago alone. Shane McMahon may be getting the itch to get back in the business, and I would welcome it in the white right role overall. I also think Mercedes Monet could be a fun pairing with that group. So you, then you have the Young Bucks, Mercedes Monet, and Shane McMahon. Here comes the money. Well, those are my final thoughts and results. I thank you each and every so much every week. I'm going to get out. Thanks for watching. It's not goodbye. It's game over.